Okay, uh, Catherine, nice to meet you virtually. I would like to introduce you. Catherine Xiang is going to speak about designing the education program, Chinese language and culture for business. Catherine is an established author and applied linguist. She is head of East Asian languages at London School of Economics and she is skilled in intercultural communication, mm -hmm. translation, and public speaking. Catherine, we are looking for your presentation. Over to you. Thank you so much, Monica, for this lovely introduction, and thanks, everybody, to join today's session. So as the title suggests, I'm going to talk about design and launching of a year-long executive program for business at LSE, but particularly at the Confucius Institute for Business London, which is a partnership between LSE and Tsinghua University. So let's give you a little bit of background for those of you who are not familiar with the Confucius Institute. Um, these are like uh, cultural institutes promoting Chinese language and culture. They've got over 500 different institutes around the globe. And the one at LSE, which is in partnership, as I mentioned, with Tsinghua University in China. And our focus is actually for business. We are the very first one focused on business Chinese education. And so as me, as the UK director of the Confucius Institute, and I'm also responsible for the overall running of the Institute, and one of the ideas to launch this new program in 2018. So this is just the background of our institute. We work, as you can see, a range of different companies as well. Um, so mentioned briefly now, the program is launched back in March 2018. So this is a year-long program and the focus on business executives. So all our learners, they're adults and they're professionals, and they all have a specific interest in terms of doing business and engage with China. So the purpose of my talk today is to really share some views and ideas in terms of how we structure the program, what are the features we try to incorporate to facilitate our particular group of learners, a little bit about our study trip, and most importantly is what we've learned so far. And I add a little bit in terms of the challenges and opportunity in terms of COVID-19. I'm sure that probably bring a lot of challenges and opportunity for everybody. So it would be quite nice to touch upon on that. But the main focus would be talking through different aspects of the program and with a view of sharing the key consideration and the key element in terms of the design of the program. So let's start. Well, the most important consideration in terms of why we do this as a program is really we feel the learning should be taken form in different shapes and through different delivery channels. Okay, so this is one of the most important aspects. So we bring in actually different features and allowing students to study in different contexts and involve a range of different activities in this program to really give them a very comprehensive experience. And also that's based on the idea of learning design as focus on experience rather than just the content. So let me just explain a little bit how we do that. Let's give you an overview of how we structure the program. So as you can see already, there's different blocks, different activities involved. So let's start from the top. The most important, obviously, is our weekly business Chinese courses. So these run weekly throughout 40 weeks. And then you also have then the China Business Briefing, which is a public lecture that we combine LSE academics with business industry leaders and talk about the latest you know, trend and the ideas from business world. We have them monthly. So the, this 10 Saturday sessions is actually 10 monthly sessions. So each Saturday, the first Saturday of each month, we have a full day program. That's where we focus on preparation for HSK qualifications. That is uh, international qualification in Chinese proficiency and intercultural communication training. Throughout the year, we also have a range of cultural events. So we will provide students at least three, for example, the Chinese New Year, Mid-Autumn and Moon Festival. And then students will have opportunity to take 
qualification exam, as I mentioned, linked to HSK. And there's also the higher level BCT, so business Chinese test so that's designed for higher linguistic proficiency learners. And then they have one optional study trip to China. I will uh, talk a little bit more later, but optional because we acknowledge the fact that not all business people can take time off to go to China. And then we provide a lot of learning support through online platforms and apps. And then another thing is quite useful for our learners when we design this because they are all busy people. So we offer up to six catch-up sessions just in case they miss the class. So they feel there is a safety net to support them. And finally, we put on a very nice uh, graduation in the House of Lords to celebrate their um, success. It's also another opportunity for network. So let me just talk a little bit about what we want our students to learn in, in terms of key learning outcomes from this program. So we keep it quite simple. There are just three most important things we want them to be able to achieve. One is to be able to have conversation, you know, small talks before they actually get down to business, which most likely would be switched to English. And the second one is the knowledge, the knowledge about Chinese culture and approach to businesses. And finally is meeting like-minded people and really expand their contact through this program and through our network, um, both LSE and the Tsinghua to reach to the global business world. And so this is now I'm moving to how we enable our students to achieve these three learning outcomes. So we identify three key features for our program. Okay, so one is the blended approach to language learning. Second is intercultural communication and management. And finally is events and networking. So you probably can connect some dots already linked to the previous structure, but I'm going to now go into more details to explain a little bit more about how we think about these key features and what are the key considerations we put when we design these key features. Well, let's start with the blended learning approach. I think everybody here is very familiar already with the definition of what is considered to be blended learning. And we all know it has, research has shown that it creates great impact. And also it's almost a need nowadays in the modern world. And the students tend to, especially younger learners, they tend to be more tech savvy and they want to be able to have that flexibility to learn anywhere and anytime. So what we do slightly differently is that typically the blended learning would, you know, combine two delivery modes. And as you could imagine, it's face-to-face -face and online platforms. And what we do is we combine, we have a really multi-delivery mode. So it's a lot of, of course, the face-to-face -face classroom. And then we use Moodle, which is an online learning platform at LSE. And then we use also mobile apps and one thing I want to highlight is that we also use a lot of Chinese apps to facilitate learning. And that's also because we know, for example, particularly WeChat, it's so important for business communication in China. So we want our students learn the language, but also using Chinese apps to get to know how business communication is actually done in China. So we use a range of delivery modes through a range of different uh, platforms. So this is the most, uh, this is the interface, the picture you can see is LSE Moodle. So I think quite a lot of you probably already familiar with Moodle and Blackboard. They are two kind of uh, most common platforms used in the UK at least. So as you can see, this is for our March intake students. So we break down into months. And then most importantly is that they will have the course content within the each block, of course. And then they have the discussion forum, as you can see here, to facilitate discussion. And then we offer individual tailor-made materials for our students because even though they are interested in doing business with China, they actually do come from a wide range of different industry and with personal interest as well. So we feel it's really, really important to design that for students. So they all have their individual learning material. And then we have the quizzes. You can't see it from the uh, interface, but it's built into each month. So they have the online quizzes and 
e-feedback e would be provided through that. So we do that because we feel, you know, the weekly post, for example, within the uh, platform is really important in the way that not only we post the learning material, but also we provide learning tips and guidance because they are all, you know, adult learners, they probably have already established a particular way of their own learning strategy. So we want to guide them through and work and advice based on their own learning strategy to help them to find you know, a better sense of direction and a better way of learning. This is just a quick example of the forum. So this is beginner level. So you can see on the top is the teacher set a question, simple question when it is your birthday to engage students to practice what they've learned, which is dates in that session. This is an example of uh, tailor-made material. This is for a particular student to actually work in a diplomacy setting and he's actually from France. So you can see it's very interesting news, particularly news in Chinese that is uh, written in Chinese and also talk about, you know, China-France relationship. So this is the, the article was actually written by our teacher, so modified we take the information from the website, Chinese website, but modify it into a little bit. This is an intermediate level student. So more kind of accessible language to our learner. And then you can see here also highlighted keywords in red and teach the student how to use that. And finally, I mentioned before, so it's not just the Moodle, not just the face-to-face, -face, but we also have the online office hours. So Skype, WeChat, more recently, we all switched to Zoom. WeChat is a very important aspect. As I mentioned earlier, we really show students different functionalities uh, in WeChat as well. And then we we'll also use mobile learning apps. Here's uh, the top three apps we recommend to our students. So HSK, Placo, which is like a dictionary, and Ia Han, which is focused on business Chinese. So the, as a summary in terms of our blended approach, the key consideration is that we follow the um, guidance based on Adams Extra in 2009 that when you operate blended learning, you really want to take into consideration four different levels. And what we try to do is we incorporate all these four different levels. So the learning of resources available, first of all, and for the individual learners. And then the learning resources are very well connected to the class. So this is very typically reflected in our quizzes and our forums. And then the learning, you know, also play, the platform also play a role in providing material and supporting collaborative discussion and peer support. So again, we do that a lot with the online forum. And then Finally, face-to-face -face session and online learning activities are well coupled. So that is very much in terms of the, the handouts we up, upload, the quizzes, and then again, very much through the additional quizzes that we put. So now let me move to the second feature, which is intercultural communication and management. So intercultural competence, I'm not going to read the definition that we're going to adopt. Um, this part of the training program is actually mostly delivered in English, okay? And these involve in 10 sessions, as I mentioned, on a Saturday. So we have 10 Saturday full days. And on those Saturdays, three hours will be focused on uh, intercultural communication. So these are just the outline of the topics that we cover. So as you can see, there will be quite a lot it's a combination of theory and also with a huge focus, of course, on China in terms of key value communication styles. And for example, the important cultural keywords like face and guanxi. And in terms of our key consideration is that we, the session we run is not just a pure form of lecturing. So you, you, you tell students what to do, but it's really in, encouraging students to bring their own real life experience when they dealing with Chinese counterparts. And there's a lot about discussion and a lot about case study based on research. So we will introduce a lot of research done by other scholars, look at some kind of interaction 
And then based on that, for example, when we look at one particular case study, um, politeness will bring the study on business meeting with Chinese delegates, and then we will design a range of tasks so that students can really explore and discuss. And finally, always they need to bring a case study from their own workplace and explain how they think that could be applied, okay? And final feature, final feature in terms of events and networking. So as you can imagine, for business people, this is really, really important. We want to create that um, opportunity, the platform for them to get to know each other and more people beyond. So I mentioned already, the China Business Briefings, they are the public lectures. So these are not just for our students, but also for anybody beyond our program who are interested in doing business with China or the Chinese development in economy to come. So our students will have the opportunity as a VIP to stay on and then to communicate with the speakers. And we run a range of cultural events I mentioned before. This is just a image of the students writing calligraphy uh, their names actually learn to write their names in the Chinese cal calligraphy at one of our World Chinese New Year event. And the other thing I want to highlight is that it's not just the opportunity, the platform we, we present to our students, right? They meet more people, more like-minded people. The other thing very important is that they need to link and really experience and live what they learned in the intercultural communication because some of these events involve also native speakers of Chinese. Okay, so they have this opportunity to really communicate, find out what does it mean, for example, guanxi. Is it the same as, you know, social network as in the Western view? If so, how is that, you know? And if not, actually, according to a lot of research, it's not. So they will find out how is that different through the actual meeting of the Chinese counterparts or more people, um, Chinese people doing business in, in the UK. So that is actually just the summary of what I already mentioned, you know, in terms of the key consideration. We acknowledge it's very, very important, but at the same time, we want to add value to our students in our program. Um, last but not least, I think it's useful to mention the study trip. So we give them two weeks opportunity to go to uh, China. Initially, it's with Tsinghua University in Beijing, our partner university. And they all love it. You can see they do a range of uh, cultural activities, but continue to learn Chinese, of course. And then we organize a lot of company visits and we try to link that to their industry, to their, you know, interest. And then actually in 2019, we added Shanghai as a new des uh, destination, which is uh, good news. It's challenging, but it's good news because actually that means our students uh, actually move from one year to the next. So we have much higher retention, retention rate. So when the students come back to study with us for the second year, they've already been to Beijing. They want to explore more cities uh, in China. So that's why we introduced Shanghai. So now we have two different destinations and we don't know, we're trying our best to see if we could have even more different cities, maybe second tier cities in China. So as a summary, in terms of I mentioned how we actually uh, help our students or when we design the program to link to, you know, um, being able to engage and facilitate the learning outcome. So these are the three learning outcomes that we designed. And then in terms of the small talk, informal com com uh, communication, we really use a blended approach in enable students to learn. But also I want to highlight, we actually emphasize a lot on reading and, uh, sorry, on listening and speaking because we know for a lot of um, language learners in our group, maybe reading and writing Chinese characters is slightly less um, important. And then, of course, the sufficient knowledge about Chinese culture is through our intercultural communication and network I just mentioned through a range of different um, events we put out for them. So what we've learned so far, this is where I just put some thoughts together. So I think our particular group of students, they really appreciated the practical support. So for example, the online office hours and catch up sessions, they love it. Online office hour, I didn't mention um, too much. So basically every week they have the opportunity to pick a time and then they can do it uh, like dropping session to communicate and ask questions with the teacher. The second one is less, is more. Uh, this is a 
quite hard to accept because we, as you can imagine, we put a lot of things for our students, right? But they are all really, really busy. So sometimes they are like, we are, we're stressed. You give us so much. We don't know. We feel we can't learn everything, you know? So in a way, less is more. So we start to, you know, remove some features. And we also try to provide more guidance to students for them to understand. So for example, what is essential, right? And maybe participating in the online forum is essential. But then learning apps is optional. So they, 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 they have their own way to prioritize. And then we also noticed more recently, um, the students actually, when they have different linguistic levels, they have slightly different uh, design for HSK. HSK is particularly seem to be popular for uh, learners who just start learning Chinese. I think it's understandable. They want something to show, right, by the end of our course. But for our higher level students, they really, they probably have already got certain type of um, level of HSK. They really want to focus on the linguistic proficiency, which is quite interesting. And finally, um, different group of students also indicate quite different attitude towards uh, technology use. And as you probably can also imagine, younger generation just more, much more, um, you know, have the interest to try different apps, etc. So let me just uh, very, very quickly talk a little bit about the COVID-19 impact. So of course, it has a huge challenge on a lot of things that we do, study trips, networking, and public lecture three, this three in particular. So we're working extremely hard to think how we can do things differently. So we don't lose value to what students do, but at the same time, we need to be practical, particularly for this coming uh, cohort that in October, we have a new cohort starting. Um, but there's also interesting opportunity because of the lockdown happened uh, during the summer in the UK, we actually launched a brand new CLCB online. So this is a CLCB program, but it's completely online. So we it's not year long anymore. We, we reduced it a little bit. So it's five months program, but it's de delivered completely online. And we already got a lot of interest um, from the October intake, so which is good news. So... I'm running out of time a little bit. I do want to take questions and hopefully um, see some kind of uh, discussion. So thank you very much for listening. Here's my email. And please connect me if you want through LinkedIn. And actually the whole design, um, the idea of the program is being published in uh, a special issue of the Journal of Teaching English for Specific and Academic Purposes in 2018. So if you want to read the whole paper, please go ahead. And it included all the references that I mentioned in my talk. So thank you, everybody. Again, I'm just going to stop sharing now. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for your presentation. I got a lot of inspiration for my Russian classes that I teach at the Faculty of Economics here in Brno. So oh, yeah, great. <laughs> Do we have any questions in our audience? Hi, everybody. <laughs> I can't see you, but it's good to know you're there. Maybe I can ask one question. Yeah. Catherine, uh, what proportion of the students end up going on the study trip? Okay, thank you. Thank you for that question. It, of course, vary a little bit. Okay, so we currently do intake, two intakes. So we have the spring intake. So they study in March and then they finish towards the end of the year, December. And usually they go to China in summer. OK, and then we have the October intake. So they start in October and they finish in uh, July and usually they go in the winter time. So it kind of vary based on intake because we give it as an optional. But I mean, I can tell you majority of the students, if they can take time off, they would go. So I think. The ratio, I can't give you a specific number. I think it's probably 60, 70 uh, percent students would go because they really appreciate the opportunity. So, and we are quite flexible. So um, if student cannot go, for example, in the summer for work reason, we will be able to facilitate that for them again in winter. So I think so far, I would say majority of the, our students would have had the opportunity to go to China. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. 
I would like to ask a question about the online office hours. Can you please tell us some more details? Uh, are these online office hours structured anyhow? Great, thank you for that question. Yes, I, di I didn't talk in details about this. So our online office hours, so basically the time is structured. So one of the key things is we want to make sure this is you know, useful for our students. So pretty much all of them are structured during lunchtime and evening time. So this is one thing, very important consideration because they are all at work and they're super busy. And then in terms of the delivery and the content, so the students have two options. They could choose fixed time slot. So if they feel they can commit, they want this online office hours every week, they have to specify that. So they can do that and have a fixed slot and dedicated teacher. So, you know, they, they can meet weekly. Alternatively, students have the option to sign up on a weekly basis. So then that gives them a bit of flexibility. They do have to go through the signing up process, but then they can pick a different time slot based on their schedule in that week. And in terms of the content, now the content, we keep it really flexible. So the idea is that it's your time, okay? We tell the students it's your time. You bring in what you want to do in that half an hour. It can be asking some question link to the course. It can be have additional practice because they all at different levels as well. Um, I forgot to mention, we actually offer Chinese levels across six different levels. And then it can be also sometimes they're preparing really for a work you know, presentation to, with the, to a Chinese group of people. So they need to work on something in Chinese for that particular purpose. So then they can practice as well. So I think the content, we keep it quite flexible, but the overall delivery is fairly fixed in terms of time and how they select their uh, slots. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you very much. Any other questions? So Catherine, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you. I hope the rest of the conference goes well and I hope we all meet very soon. Yes, we hope to meet you soon in Brno. Thank you very much. And goodbye. <laughs> Bye.